Hey guys, how's it going? Mr Mitchell here. In this video we're going to go over question 1 from the 2022 SQA Advanced Tire Physics exam paper. So let's get started. Question 1 says, during a short test run, a dragster accelerates from rest along a straight track. The test run starts at time t equals 0 seconds. During the test run, the velocity v of the dragster at time t is given by the relationship v equals 6.6t squared plus 2.2t where V is measured in meters per second and T is measured in seconds. A part 1 says using calculus methods, determine the acceleration of the dragster at time T equals 4.1 seconds. And you'll see there's three marks available here. Well remember we were given an expression here for velocity in terms of time T, so to find the acceleration we need to differentiate. So we want to differentiate V with respect to time. So doing that we can write A equals dV by dt, which remember is just an equation on your relationship sheet. And we can say that this is equal to d by dt, the rate of change of 6.6t squared plus 2.2t. So if we differentiate, we can bring the power down and multiply it by the number at the front and then take one away from the power. So that's the same as 13.2t plus 2.2. And now we've got our acceleration expression. We want to now substitute the time value. So we can say a is equal to 13.2 times 4.1 plus 2.2. So putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 56 meters per second squared. A part 2 says using calculus methods determine the distance travelled by the dragster between t equals 0 seconds and t equals 4.1 seconds. And again there's three marks available here. Well because we have an expression for velocity v and we want to determine distance or displacement s, then that means we need to integrate this time. So we want to integrate v with respect to time, so we can write v as being equal to ds by dt, which remember is just an equation from the relationship sheet, and that is equal to 6.6t squared plus 2.2t. So we can now ignore the v and integrate both of these, so we have the integral of ds by dt dt is equal to the integral of 6.6t squared plus 2.2t dt, where I've just used brackets to show that we're integrating both parts of this expression. Now integrating velocity will give us displacement s on this side, and then to integrate remember we need to raise the power by 1 and divide by the new power. So we have 6.6t cubed over 3 plus 2.2t squared over 2 plus c, where c is our constant, and then we can simplify this to get s equals 2.2t cubed plus 1.1t squared plus c. And to find what this constant c is, we need to consider the initial conditions. So remember that means what happens when time t equals 0, well we can say that the dragster won't have moved, so its displacement s will equal 0 at this time, and therefore if we plug in t equals 0 here and s equals 0, then we get c equals 0. So that means we can rewrite s as s equals 2.2t cubed plus 1.1t squared. Now we want to find the distance travelled in a total time of 4.1 seconds, so lastly we want to substitute the time value. So we have s equals 2.2 times 4.1 cubed plus 1.1 times 4.1 squared, and putting that into your calculator should give you an answer of 170 metres. Lastly part b says on the axis below, sketch a graph to show the variation of velocity of the dragster with time between t equals 0 seconds and t equals 4.1 seconds. Numerical values are not required on the velocity axis. And this question is worth one mark. So you can see we've got v in meters per second in the y-axis and then time in seconds in the x-axis and we've got this time of 4.1 seconds labelled here. Well if we go back to a part 1, remember we obtained an expression for acceleration in terms of time. So it was a equals 13.2t plus 2.2, which tells us that acceleration is not constant, it depends on this time t. And if you were to sub in time values between 0 and 4.1 here, then you would be able to see how the acceleration changes over time. So for example, if you subbed in t equals 0, acceleration would start at 2.2 meters per second squared. And then at t equals 1 second, you would have a equals 13.2 plus 2.2, which would give you 15.4 meters per second squared. And then if you subbed in t equals 2 seconds, you would have a you would have a equals 13.2 times 2 plus 2.2, which would give you 28.6 and so on. So the acceleration is going to keep increasing more and more. Now if we go back to our sketch, our graph should look something like this, where we've got this curve sloping up the way, and you'll notice it's starting to level off at this 4.1 seconds. Now you don't need this dashed line here, that's just to show you that I'm drawing my curve up to that 4.1 seconds. But the main idea is that you don't want to show straight lines here because that would imply constant accelerations, whereas we've got an acceleration that's not constant, it depends on time. So the curve sloping up the way tells us that velocity is increasing more and more in the same time, which means acceleration is constantly increasing here. So if we look at the y-axis here, notice how as the curve slopes upwards, we're getting a bigger change in velocity in a given time, and that suggests an increasing acceleration. So for that one mark, you really just want to be showing a curve sloping up the way, and you want to stop your curve at 4.1 seconds. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.